I thank you, God, for most this amazing by E.E. E. Cummings. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life and of love and wings and of the gay great happening illimitably earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing any, lifted from the know of all nothing, human merely being, doubt unimaginable you, now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are opened. Welcome. Edward Eslin Cummings was born in 1894 in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and he died in September 1962. He studied Latin and Greek at the Latin School in Cambridge. He received an MA from Harvard University where he was introduced to other avant-garde writers such as Ezra Pound and Gertrude Stein. He also travelled throughout Europe, meeting poets and artists, including Pablo Picasso, whose work he particularly admired. The interesting thing about Cummings' work is that it has an engaging, playful quality experimenting with spelling, punctuation, syntax. He once said about his own poetry, don't try to understand it, let it understand you. Enjoy it. At the time of his death, he was the second most widely read poet in the United States after Robert Frost. Poet and critic Randall Jarrell once said, One of the most individualistic poets who ever lived is E. E. Cummings. It is this individual quality, this um, experimentation that enables him to convey particular nuances of thought and feeling in an original and unique way. The marvellous opening lines of the poem are a direct address to God, thanking and praising God for the amazing day. The tone of awe and wonder is accentuated by his use of the I as small case and you and God using the uppercase to emphasize 
his insignificance in relation to God, as well as his reverence for God. In the line, I thank you God for most this amazing day, the unusual word order causes the emphasis to fall on the word most, intensely conveying both his rapture and the generous perfection of God's creation. The colon introduces the reader to and highlights all the characteristics of the day that fill him with delight. But it is the playful and original experimentation with form that arrests the reader. It is as if, in the poet's intense joy, the words tumble out spontaneously, and yet the personification of the leaping greenly spirit of trees conveys in such a vivid, fresh, original way the depiction of the vitality of nature. Similarly, his seemingly playful word order in A Blue True Dream of Sky is a unique expression of the ideal sublimely conveyed in nature. His rush of gratitude reaches a climax in for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes, with its emphasis on natural, infinite, and finally, yes, defining God's creation as everlasting and affirmative, implying goodness, truth, righteousness. Cummings continually jolts the reader out of their conventional expectations in order to make the reader experience with fresh insights. Brackets, which are traditionally used to marginalize information, are used in this poem to highlight and to interlink two sections of the text so that they can both work in isolation and as an intensely felt interrelated comment. The theme of rebirth and resurrection burst upon the reader in a bracketed quatrain which remains typographically highlighted. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life and of love and wings, and of the gay great happening, illimitably earth. This points to his physical and spiritual awakening, to the wonder of the day and of God. The sun's birthday, suggesting rejuvenation and renewal in nature, easily slips into the birthday of life and of love and wings, once again emphasizing the three concepts in an echo of a former rhythm. While the enjambed lines evoke enthusiasm and awe, we vividly experience 
new beginnings afresh with a sudden sweeping awareness that lifts him up out of ignorance or depression as if on wings, which evoke an intoxicating rapture. Alliteration is used to convey the vast and limitless joys of the earth. This section can both stand alone and act in conversation with the concluding lines of the poem. Now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are opened. These convey his deep personal spiritual awakening to the wonder of God. In a similar way, the third quatrain looks forward towards an elevation from human merely being. The paltriness and insignificance of merely existing as a human in comparison with the infinite power of God. The excitement of experiencing this afresh through tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing the senses blending in a flood of sensual experience. We are swept into the highlighted lines lifted from the know of all nothing which contrasts with and is in conversation with everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. This ultimately dispels the notion of possible doubt. Doubt unimaginable. You. If you enjoyed this poem and the commentary, please remember to click the bell below and subscribe and visit me at my website, fourmuse.org.